<gasps> Good morning, Skype bots and aspiring basement gent musicians. It's me, your homeboy, Evan Van Dyne. Today I'm bringing you a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide on how to make your home recordings sound like shit. <laughs> Disclaimer, this video is made under the assumption that you already have your music recorded. If you are looking for a guide on how to record your music, then you can watch part one of this series, which actually has not been made yet because I am a fucking punk and an anarcho-primitivist, so I am rebelling against the societal norms of releasing content in chronological order. I will also be using Reaper, as it is my preferred digital audio workstation, or DAW if you are a middle schooler using a text message abbreviation to describe digital audio workstations. Now with that out of the way, let us begin. Let's start with a drum. Actually, I take that back. Let's start by mastering the music before the levels are even set, or anything is even mixed to begin with. The first thing you're going to want to do is click on the Klondike bar on your master track. This should open a window allowing you to add effects to that track. We're going to start off with some equalization, or EQ if you want to be a hip and cool cat. We're going to boost some upper and lower mids, and add a high and low pass filter just to make it aesthetically pleasing and symmetrical. Next, we're going to add some re- I honestly just dicked around with some settings, and I don't even know what half of these settings mean, but I think they sound pretty good. After you've re the master track, we're going to add a compressor. Again, I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to this, I just hear a lot of people talking about using compressors, and I just wanted to fit in for once. After this, we're going to use a specialized tactic only employed by the absolute masterminds of mixing with the greatest intellect. This, of course, is a hard limiter, essentially as long as you are being reasonable and talking nicely to it. A limiter allows you to be completely carefree with your levels and nothing will ever clip. Now that we've mastered the entire album, it's time to move on to mixing. Earlier I stated that we will be starting with the drums, so let's continue in this route. Assuming that you are using program drums with Easy Drummer, this should be quite simple. Now if you are recording live drums, then you are a scrub, an old head, and a boomer, and you're doing it wrong. This is 2019, and we're on some Camille level shit. First things first, make sure you boost the ever-living toaster out of the low end in your kick drum, by about 7.2 decibels. Then add some high end for the nice click, and scoop the lower mids. Then we're gonna make sure the snare drum is loud and compressed as all fuck. If your snare drum isn't clipping at plus 6.4 dB at all times, you're doing something wrong. In order to accomplish this, use the modern rock snare preset and recomp, then use the rock preset in your equalizer. After this, stick around with some reverb to make your snare sound artificially large. Now, Easy Drummer's toms are usually pretty quiet, so you're gonna wanna turn up the heat a little bit so it boils faster. Next, boost the low end a little bit so it shakes your house, vibrating your blouse, and killing the mouse in the attic. I don't really mess around with the sound of hi-hats or overheads, I just make sure that they're nice and spicy, which the Toontrack Metal Machine Sample Pack does a pretty good job at on its own. You also might want to employ this technique called parallel compression. It's when you take two parallel lines and you compress them so close together that the drums don't know what to do, so they just get louder. It actually means that you route all the individual drum tracks to a separate track and compress that track until it sounds like an infant annihilator album. This will make your drums sound loud. Next, let's do the guitars and bass. Route all the guitar and bass tracks to one track that will encompass all. Proceed to compress this track in the low end using a multi-band tractor. You can also EQ some low end out so it doesn't sound like your mix is going off-roading in a Jeep Wrangler. Now take your guitar Fortnite bus and compress the low end again. If you're playing gent or brutal death metal or any subgenre that involves high gain and palm muting, this is absolutely essential. You also may want to drink some skim milk and skim through and find any harsh frequencies that you just don't want there. Remove these and you have a gnarly guitar tone. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention you should probably dual track your guitars and pan them left and right by about 80 degrees Celsius. This makes your guitar sound wide and stereo. stereo. Now it's time for the bass. Program your bass using Contact 5 with the Panda Bass DI sample pack. You have no other options because your bass player did not learn the parts. Copy the bass parts and then make a new track. Paste them into the new track. Apply an EQ to one track, only allowing the low end to pass through. Then compress the living hell out of the bass. Also add a limiter so that it's loud. On the new track with the duplicated bass parts, do the exact opposite. The high end should give your bass some cling clang. Also, don't be afraid to add some distortion to the high end to give it even more cling clang. When these two tracks are played together, it sounds absolutely apocalyptic. Now that the majority of instrumentals are done, we can move on to vocals. If you are using harsh vocals, this process is pretty simple. If you are using clean singing in your music, then you are a poser and I have no desire to speak with you further. Essentially, harsh vocals are mixed using a limiter yet again, a Nintendo DSer, some light EQ, and a delay. You already know exactly what the limiter does because you've used it 16 times already in the process of this mix. But you may be asking, why the fuck do I need a DS? I already own a Game Boy and the only game I play anyway is Pokemon Leaf Green. Well, good sir, the answer to this question is right in front of you. You have a speech impediment, and you are unable to pronounce the letter S. At least that's how you want to sound, because the harsh S sound will hurt your ears, and DSer allows you to accomplish this. 
It also allows you to play Super Mario 64 on the go, so it's a win-win in my book. The EQ is just to make sure that your vocals aren't super muddy. Get rid of some of those mean low-end bad boys and you're good to go. And last but certainly not least for vocals, delay. 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 Delay will make you sound like you recorded your vocals in space, which makes no sense because in outer space nobody can hear you scream. However, this is just a myth perpetrated by the Mayans, and those bastards also told us the world was ending in 2012. I'm still salty about that because I was really looking forward to it since the movie was so good. Now for the fun part, synths. Synths make your mix sound bigger for some reason, even if you can barely hear them. All you really gotta do is just place them in the file somewhere. Finally, add an unhealthy dose of bass drops and you're good to go. You have now successfully created an entire mix just in your basement. Upload it to Bandcamp, post it to Facebook, and share your creation with the world. They'll probably love it. Or hate it. I'm not sure. Why don't you go try this yourself and find out?